But there's one genre in particular we really love. Movies where animals talk! Now call me old-fashioned, but nothing warms my heart quite like a movie with a talking animal. I get the same feeling in my heart too, Matt, but that's because of an ongoing medical condition. Ah. Anywho, what's our first movie to review? This week's Pick of the Litter is a delightful romp titled A Talking Cat? Exclamation point? Question mark? Exclamation point? No, Kevin, you're you're not supposed to say the punctuation. They're they're used for a, a flare of emotion, like a talking cat. 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 There we go, buddy. A talking cat takes a normal, boring romantic comedy and spices it up with a talking cat. But here's the catch. The cat can only talk to you once. And that leads to a lot of confusing situations for our protagonists of this movie. Oh, so many confusing situations. But hilarious for the viewers. True, Matt. This film really throws a monkey wrench into your traditional talking animal movies. Now, we actually don't have the right to show any of this movie. But we do have a highlight reel of us watching the movie that I think shows how you should feel when viewing it. Enjoy! You can talk, but only once. I don't make the rules, Phil. A talking cat? That's just stupid. That's the best you could come up with. You both talked to a cat, didn't you? And the cat talked back, didn't it? I looked like something that the cat dragged in. <laughs> that the cat dragged in. Cat dragged in. <laughs> <laughs> That was. Indeed it was. Huh. Now Matt, who was the voice of Duffy the Talking Cat? Well, I'm so glad you asked. It was none other than Eric Roberts. OMG. I loved Eric Roberts' work in First Dog, the oh. movie where he plays the President of the United States who loses his puppy only to be recovered by a small orphan boy. Well now, he's on the other side of the dog fence and scampering through the cat door playing a pretty fantastic talking cat. Oh. oh. Now, I think uh, Mr. Roberts really shines here more than ever as an actor. Can we uh, play a clip of us watching his performance? I'm a talking cat, but I can only talk to a person once. Wow, what a performance! You know, I read in order to prepare for this role, Eric Roberts spent an entire week locked in a hotel room with only a box of litter and a kilo of catnip. Oh, well, it sure shows. I don't know about you, Matt, but I give this movie two paws up. Totally, Kevin. For such an experimental film, could have been a real cat catastrophe. I also give it two paws way up and a sexy meow for all the on screen chemistry from the non feline actors. Move over, Nicholas Sparks. There's a new type of romantic comedy in town. And it's called A Talking Cat? Now, Matt, if you could have a cat say only one thing to you, what would it be? That's a great question, Kevin. If a cat could say anything to me, I'd want it to be, well, sorry for the allergies. <laughs> Same question, buddy. I guess if I could have a cat say one thing to me, I would want it to say, you're not worthless, you're worthwhile. Now it's time for our next segment. Welcome <laughs> to the Doghouse. Each week we find a movie that has been clearly mislabeled as an animal film. There are so many of these films out there. I don't know how many times I've gone to the local Hollywood video, rented a movie that had a name of an animal in it, and it had nothing to do with animals. Hollywood, if you're gonna put an animal's name in the title, at least have the common courtesy to put an animal in the movie. It's confusing and dishonest. Now, one of the biggest offenders of this of all time has to be Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. There are no dogs in this movie. No dogs. One. What the fudge, Mr. T? I read this movie and expect to see a bunch of pups having a fun day down by the reservoir, and I get this load of malarkey? <laughs> fuck you! I'm fucking dying! There's no point in this fucking gun in my dead! I couldn't take a cat nap for days after seeing that film. 
Matt and I send this movie to the doghouse for not only being extremely violent, but not being a movie about a bunch of dogs pulling off a fun diamond heist by wearing suits. That would have been adorable. Imagine if all the cops were played by little kitty cats. That would have been the best. Hollywood make that movie. On a lighter note, we've reached today's final segment. Life imitates bark, where we take a real life animal story that's almost too fantastical to be true. But it is. This week's story comes from Denver, Colorado. Stephen Bison was hiking along a mountain when he tripped and fell into a well. Five days later, a golden retriever named Peggy came and tried to save him. I don't know about you, Matt, but if I was trapped for five days and then was greeted by a friendly puppy right after, I'd be so happy. That'd be such a sight for sore eyes. So did Peggy save him? Nope! Apparently the animal didn't possess the uncanny abilities of our furry film friends, and the man died of hyperthermia. Ooh, that's what a totally bad thing. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I'm Matt. I'm Kevin. And this has been Lights, Lights Camera, Camera Animals, Animals with, with Matt and Kevin. Kevin.